Hello and welcome to this very special show, ETS Driving Human Progress on CNBC TV 18 and I'm your host, Ruchira Sharma. The post-pandemic world has seen a significant rise in businesses like EdTech. Globally, there is a huge boom in the space. These businesses are essentially companies that merge education with technology to offer the best solutions for learners like specially tailored classes and easy access to content. In India also, the edtech and professional skilling segment has witnessed a phenomenal growth in the last couple of years. And that is our focus today, the edtech sector, which has evolved into a mainstream market from a niche market and it is also pivotal to growth and development of students. Educational Testing Service is a global leader in the educational assessment and research sector. And on the show today, I'm joined by a special guest, Mr. Amit Seva, CEO ETS. And through this discussion, we will focus on ETS's vision, innovation strategies, investment plans and expansion endeavors. So welcome to the show and thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us uh, on the show, Ruchira. It's great to be here. Um, it's great to have you. So uh, let me start with, uh, there's a very famous quote that, you know, education is not a preparation for life. It is life itself. So uh, what is your view on the booming Indian ed tech landscape and what has changed since the last time that you were here? I'm just so excited to be here. India is buzzing. And what brings me here is a couple of reasons. The mm -hmm. first is this is the first year anniversary of our partnership with the Ministry of Education sure. around the Parak Initiative. Okay. This is an important initiative that the ministry has set uh, to s establish a nationwide assessment framework mm -hmm. across the states. We think sure. this is a great initiative and we're just really grateful to have this collaboration. All so right. I'm here for supporting the Ministry of Education efforts. I'm also here to spend time, Ruchira, with our team. Mm -hmm. We've been expanding significantly in India. We made an acquisition of a company called Webox. This is my first time to meet with the team. Mm -hmm. uh, we made uh, some new hires and I'm having an opportunity to have some interactions. All right, and I believe you also had this big acquisition uh, globally. That's right? exactly right, yes. We just recently acquired a company called PSI as well. And we're really delighted to have the opportunity to share that news here to the Indian audience as well. We're also launching new capability centers in mm -hmm. Delhi and Hyderabad. All right. And so these are uh, centers that will allow us to build new capabilities in technology, assessment mm -hmm. development, analytics, finance, HR, and a host of other areas. So I'm here in India. India's buzzing right now. Yes. And India ETS is also buzzing. So it's a chance for us to just spend some time with the team. We're also here to spend some time with some of our strategic partners. All We've right. made investments with a variety of ed tech companies and mm -hmm. getting a chance to spend some time to meet with the leaders of companies like Upgrad, leaders like at College Deco, mm -hmm. at Leverage, and at many other companies sure. uh, that, that are part of the ecosystem here. Uh, so we're just excited to be here, and I'm going to continue throughout this year to come back and spend some time, and hopefully we'll have a chance to talk some more then as well. Definitely, we'll do that for sure. But um, the Indian ad tech ecosystem is also buzzing, and it's booming. Mm. And post the pandemic, there has been a surge of such businesses. So what are the big changes that you've seen or the big developments that you've seen here? I continue to be a big believer in the power of technology to change lives. So mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in the ed tech evolution. Sure. I think the ed tech market and the businesses are maturing, Rajira. I right. see a lot of opportunity across different kinds of platforms. For example, mm -hmm. right now a big theme in investing in ed tech is around AI. Sure. The power of using AI to really scale up learning for mm -hmm. many, many more people. I also see a lot more business to business investments. So sure. ed tech companies that are focusing on serving governments and companies and universities and school systems. Mm -hmm. I think that's another big theme. And then of course opportunities to invest in companies that are based in India that are serving the world. So these right. are three examples of themes I see mm -hmm. uh, that are gonna continue to become strong theses for us at ETS as well. Sure, you know ETS as an organization of course prioritizes on equity, fairness, easy access to students across the world and they do so by creating assessments based on rigorous research. So uh, could you tell us that with this rapid pace of globalization, how is uh, really ETS contributing to the agenda of growth and development and contributing to the learning curve overall? I think assessments are critical to the future of education on so many fronts. Because what's an assessment? An assessment is a moment to capture data about where a learner is in their journey to understand what they're learning, what they know, what they can do. And how and much have they assimilated actually, Exactly, right? exactly. And so right now, we think that there's a huge opportunity to significantly improve mm -hmm. assessments to change lives, to help people. Right. And so for us, given just the sheer amount of humanity we have in India yes. and the initiatives that are in place to really upskill and reskill, we want to be part of that journey. Just in the last year, Ruchira, 
ETS has made a variety of investments here in India, mm -hmm. and we're excited about the future potential for education in India. Uh, in just the last year, uh, we made an acquisition of a company called Webox, right. which allows us to expand our operations here in India around remote proctoring mm -hmm. and a variety of other assessment platforms. So right. for us, uh, that's just one example. We're also investing in global capability centers, both in Delhi and in Hyderabad, mm -hmm. and we're continuing to invest in our team, more broadly speaking. Uh, right. We're also investing in expansion of our core products like TOEFL, GRE, mm -hmm. TOEIC, and many other products and services. Sure. And we want to continue to support government uh, initiatives, mm -hmm. including the Parak Initiative with the Ministry of Education. Yes. Uh, we just, uh, this month, are celebrating our one-year anniversary of that partnership. All right, that's And great. we also just launched this past year a partnership with the Andhra Pradesh government, mm -hmm. uh, working on Class 3 to Class 10 English right. language strengthening. Uh, so we're working on a lot of different initiatives in acquisitions, investments, partnerships with government, partnerships with universities, and many others. And we mm -hmm. see this expansion continuing. Definitely, and of course, learners are more demanding. They want everything to be customized. So how is ETS really changing the game or uh, doing something extra, you know, as opposed to the other players? What do you think you're doing differently? Yeah, ETS, our mission is to advance quality and equity in education through assessments. Mm -hmm. How are we doing that? we're focusing on advancing the science of measurement because we're basically a measurement company. Sure. And so the way we're changing the game is by first and foremost elevating the importance of measurement in, in learning. Mm -hmm. uh, in other industries, you see this all the time. We need to measure much more of the progress we have in learning in India and around the world, and that's where ETS can play a significant role. Sure. Making the invisible hmm. more visible, helping people understand the data that's out there about where we are in the learning. We have report cards, you get your marks. Absolutely. Those are technologies that have existed for decades. Mm -hmm. There's much more sophisticated technologies, much more use of mobile phones, much more use of AI. Mm -hmm. So ETS is changing the game by applying these kinds of technologies, this kind of sophistication in the science of measurement to actually Definitely. advancing learning itself. Um, we're not just about the test. Um, we're really about making sure people are improving their lives, getting upskilled and reskilled. And that's where getting more and more data and insights can, can be really critical. You know, you spoke about AI and technology. Mm. So how do you think that has really uh, been a game changer, especially in the ed tech space? What are the big trends that you have seen in the past few years and what are you expecting um, in the next few? I want to have a share a balanced view about AI. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a lot of promise in AI, but there's also some risks to AI. Yes. And I think we but as organizations need to really think those about those. Course, yeah. yes. So what's the promise of AI in education? AI has the opportunity for us to significantly scale great learning. It has the opportunity for assessment organizations like us to use data mm -hmm. and to leverage that data to help support the learning. Sure. It has the opportunity to provide personalization of learning. Mm -hmm. It has the opportunity to build, deliver, and score assessments at scale. Sure. Through AI, you can develop content and you can accelerate that uh, exposure. And the pace to, of that, uh, generating yeah, content. Yeah, so th there's so many great things mm -hmm. about how AI can be helpful to students, to organizations, to scale, to serve, to personalize. There's, there's so many great things, mm -hmm. and we're seeing it, yes. right? At the same time, there are some risks with AI, mm -hmm. and it's important to just recognize those risks. Um, and to understand how we can manage them. One sure. of those is the importance of recognizing that there's some security issues. Yes. So when people are using AI uh, for inappropriate purposes, for cheating on a test, or for uh, taking some content and repurposing it as mm -hmm. if it's their own, that's the type of thing we have to be watchful Careful. of. Uh, yes. um, ensuring that there's good guidelines, good ethical practices. Mm -hmm. We at ETS are gonna be having a major convening in Washington DC coming right. up, specifically focused on the ethical use of AI in education. So we think that it's very important that we set new standards at the governmental level, at the school level, mm -hmm. to start to put some guardrails to help Absolutely. support and protect students and teachers and school systems on that. Mm -hmm. So whether it's security issues or guidelines, we think these are the kinds of things that we want to manage. But overall, I'm really excited about the possibilities of using AI yes. uh, to help strengthen, improve, and scale up learning for all. Well, TOEFL and GRE, of course, are tests that we're all familiar with. Uh, they've been around for years. And ETS is conducting more than 50 million tests across 180 countries. So tell us a little bit about how is ETS contributing to this agenda, and what is the kind of impact that ETS is making in the skill assessment space? I'm glad you mentioned TOEFL, and I want to take a minute just to highlight the importance of TOEFL. Mm -hmm. For all of your listeners out there that either themselves are considering going abroad, right. or have members of their family considering going abroad, take TOEFL. 
All right. TOEFL is the highest quality assessment for English language. It's an opportunity for a gateway, not just to the United States, but to Canada, to the UK, and to many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So taking TOEFL, uh, the longest standing English language assessment in India, is a great way to show that you're up to the mark, you're up to the standard of really getting a high quality access to education. In universities around the world, 12,000 universities recognize TOEFL. So right. it's a great way to get that signal, that mm -hmm. signal that you two have that level of English uh, to uh, be able to go to a global university. On your question on work skills, mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a lot of things to really shift. You know, ETS has been known for decades yes. as the world's leading provider of educational assessments, mm -hmm. educational testing. We're now transforming ETS. To, right. In addition to doing educational testing for the K-12 and higher ed market, mm -hmm. we're now, Richita, focusing much, much more on workforce readiness. We want to support the future mm -hmm. of work and to support preparing people for that future. Right. And so this shift from educational testing to future readiness is a big part of what we're doing. So what does that mean? That means whether somebody is already working, mm -hmm. whether somebody is in higher ed getting ready for work, or right. whether somebody is finishing high school. Mm -hmm. These are moments of truth for an individual and we want to empower them by providing skill-based assessments that help their organizations and the individual know where they are uh, so that they're ready for that future of work that's out there. So we believe assessments matter mm -hmm. because they give you data. And we sure. believe that in the future, just like you submit a resume, right, mm -hmm. to apply for a job, we want to give people more opportunities for certifications, more opportunities for licenses, more right. opportunities for more documents so they can show off what they know mm -hmm. so that they can be ready for that next job. They can make that differentiation by having yeah. more of those documents available for them. All right. That's truly really remarkable. And of course, India has a dynamic workforce uh, for the world. Well, how does the recent acquisition of VBOX really strengthen your role in the skill assessment space? And what is the kind of impact that it has on the trajectory of ETS? We're really excited by the investment in WeBox. Uh, WeBox is a company based here in Delhi mm -hmm. that provides a variety of services to deliver assessments. Right. These are assessments for workforce development for companies, for mm -hmm. associations. Uh, and for other types of organizations. These are hiring assessments to help human sure. resources make good hiring decisions. These are assessments for leadership development mm -hmm. and assessments for a variety of other needs. Uh, so right. Webox has many, many capabilities, currently serving over 180 companies here in India. And we think that the opportunity for expansion of that's going to continue. So our investment in Webox is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're going to be investing in products and services, investing in expanding the team, investing in new geographies. Because we really believe in order to, for India to continue on this rapid pace of skill development, mm -hmm. we need to have good assessments that measure where we are with those skills and how those skills are advancing. So everything is based on data. We want to measure what matters. Absolutely. And right now, since skill development is such a high priority here in India, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that our assessments are delivering that. And that's why this investment in WeBox uh, is such a critical one for us. Definitely. And we'll come back to understand more about your expansion plans in the country. But for now, it's time to slip into a quick break. Stay tuned as we'll be right back. Welcome back to the special show, ETS Driving Human Progress. And we're in conversation with Mr. Amit Sevag, CEO ETS, to understand more about their expansion plans in the country. So uh, we were speaking about the kind of investments you're making in the country. So tell us a little about the relevance of India as a market for ETS and what kind of plans you have for maybe the next five years. We see the market for opportunities in India in three levels. We see opportunities to serve the K-12 market, mm -hmm. the opportunities to serve the higher education market, and then sure. the opportunities to serve the workforce. Okay. On the K-12 side, there's many opportunities around strengthening math and mm -hmm. literacy as examples. Sure. On the higher education side, looking mm -hmm. for ways to have workforce skills to become much more critical across sure. the 1,000 plus universities and the many colleges across the country. Mm -hmm. And on the workforce side, we see opportunities by each of the key sectors as the country starts investing in energy, in finance, sure. in healthcare, sector by sector, the needs for each sector to strengthen reskilling and upskilling hmm. require assessments so that company leaders have a better understanding of how individuals are progressing Absolutely. and the employees themselves have a better indication of where they stand on their skill levels. Mm -hmm. So we see opportunities across all three areas. And for us, as we look over the next five years, we anticipate continuing to make investments in companies, mm -hmm. investments in new products and investments in people to support that. We see investments in the north of India and in the south of India right. uh, with the new GCCs we've just put in place. And 
and they're also big hubs, of course. Of course. Yes. <laughs> well, technology is a huge game changer. We were speaking about AI as well, and that is the buzzword. So how is uh, ETS leveraging technology in education, and what are the big changes or the big developments that you are expecting? There's a variety of ways that ETS continues to invest in technology. The first and foremost is we invest in AI. Mm -hmm. um, we've been doing this well before the buzz around AI has kicked right. off with ChatGPT and so forth. Yes. AI is involved in the operational components. We mm -hmm. use AI in the building of our assessments, right. in the delivery of our assessments, and in the scoring of our assessments. All right, so uh, tell us a little about the US uh, for Success Coalition and shed light on the collaborative efforts uh, made by ETS in this regard, you know, to uh, offer a diverse range of opportunities for students across the world. Because US, of course, is a huge destination for young students. Over the past year, Ruchira, we co-founded a very important coalition called the U.S. for Success Coalition. This is a coalition of organizations that are really passionately focused on improving accessibility for international students to come to the United States. Uh, we've expanded from an initial 11 members to now over 30 organizations throughout the United States. Sure. These are nonprofits, for-profits, institutions mm -hmm. that are really seeking to bring more international students to the United States. Right. And we have an important success we wanted to share, All which right. is just this last month, uh, based on our advising the U.S. government, mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. State Department is now allowing uh, renewals of student visas to happen without having to sit for a, another interview. Oh, that's uh, so this is able to uh, facilitate more and more international students coming back to study. Mm -hmm. As we do believe, just like my parents uh, came from India to the U.S. to study, a huge opportunity to bring more and more students from mm -hmm. India and around the world to come to the U.S. Definitely. That's great news for all the students out there. <laughs> EDS is, of course, making huge investments in the country and some strategic investments are on the cards. So uh, tell us about the Global Capability Center that you've recently launched in Hyderabad and how does that align with the overall vision of uh, expanding operations for ETS? ETS is rapidly expanding globally. We're expanding in India and we're expanding around the world. Uh, next week I'll be launching the first uh, ETS office in Dubai All right, as an example uh, just okay. next week. Uh, right. So we're expanding in other parts of the world at a rapid rate. Mm -hmm. Here in India we have several different levels of investment. First, we're investing in our people. Mm -hmm. We're investing in hiring more talent, investing right. in the talent and training and capability building. Sure. We're investing in new centers. The mm -hmm. GCCs, the Global Capability Centers in Delhi and Hyderabad are a key part of that. Right. That mm -hmm. allows us to support mm -hmm. our organization around the world. We're making investments in acquisitions like Webox, and we'll be doing more investments like this. And we're also making investments in world-leading companies, whether it's Upgrad for supporting workforce development, whether it's mm -hmm. College Deco for supporting college admissions, whether it's Leverage for supporting individuals that are seeking study abroad into the United States and elsewhere. We think that there's many, many opportunities for investment. You know, India is at such an exciting point right now. Mm -hmm. An economy of $3 trillion yes. seeking to go to $5 trillion, and by 2047, we at the 100 year Yes. anniversary will be a developed country here in India Absolutely. and so to usher in that growth we think that there's a need for human capital to really be enabled developed and yeah enabled. and that's why we are focusing on k-12 on higher ed on workforce we're focusing in the broader ecosystem here in India mm -hmm. because we think that this is a moment this is India's moment and we think we can play a supporting role in an ushering in that with better data better insights and better assessments yes global experts have called it in fact India's decade absolutely so, yes uh, we're at the right time <laughs> Well, ETS enables individuals, organizations, governments, uh, you know, and it's committed to the transformative impact of education. So what is your advice to our audience and all the Indian students who are looking towards making a successful global career? I would like to say that there is so much out there in the world to know and learn and, and get exposure mm -hmm. to. And I would invite you, depending mm -hmm. on what your interests are, your passion is, to do, do the homework. Take some time and study online, talk to friends, talk to family members, to look at opportunities globally, whether it's right. in the U.S. or around the world. Mm -hmm. There's many destinations to go to. Of course. I would also really think hard about what do you really want to do? Are you have an interest in film? Or do you have an interest in business, an interest in engineering, healthcare, or another field? Mm -hmm. Taking some time to know yourself will help guide some of the decisions around where you go to study, where you might want to go and get a project. The other big thing I would really advise is to look at opportunities step by step. 
right. you can go overseas to go undergrad. You can mm -hmm. go overseas for graduate school. You can go overseas for just a short assignment or a short program. So yes. there's many, many different elements here, and there's no rush to it. Mm -hmm. Taking the time to look at the countries, look at the programs, look at the universities. There's so many choices. It's like going to the supermarket, going to the grocery store. There's many different options. Sure. And so taking your time, doing homework, but definitely consider an overseas project. It will expose your mind to new horizons, meet new people, and really develop a global perspective. We're really one humanity. Absolutely. We're really one people across mm -hmm. the world. And getting the opportunity to connect with people from other parts of the world, mm -hmm. in a way, celebrates our own humanity. Absolutely. So thank you so much for shedding light on ETS's collaborative efforts, your innovation strategies, and your future plans, specifically for Indian students. So uh, that was it on this very special show. And clearly, a world where everybody has access to learning is definitely going to be a better place. On that note, it's a wrap from all of us here. Thanks for watching.